Welcome to Laboratory of Dreams. Dear dream travelers, welcome to the Dream Lab. Tonight we move to Scotland, where lies the magical city of Edinburgh, where ancient castles, cobbled streets and misty hills weave into a tapestry of untold stories. But when the autumn leaves begin to fall, covering the ground in shades of gold and red, the city turns into its own book of stories, waiting to be read. Our guide through these enchanting tales is the experienced storyteller Old Angus. With a face as wrinkled as historical maps of the city and a voice as soothing as an autumn wind, he welcomes us to his cosy cottage, tucked away in one of Edinburgh's narrow streets. The room is warm, lit by the soft glow of a hearth with a crackling fire, and the air is thick with the aroma of spicy apple cider. Old Angus sits in his squeaky rocking chair, and as he rocks back and forth, the wooden floor beneath him seems to whisper in agreement. Oh, autumn, sighs Angus, looking through the window at the falling leaves. The season sings a song of nostalgia in which each falling leaf carries a story worth telling. Are you ready to journey through the magical lands of Edinburgh? To walk through wand shops hidden from the naked eye and discover mysterious nooks and crannies? Or maybe you would like to know how a faithful dog's nose can fulfill wishes. So sit back, relax, and let the stories of Edinburgh in the golden embrace of autumn fill your heart and soul. Shall we begin? Today, we dive into the hidden alleys of our beloved Edinburgh, stepping away from the known paths into an obscure corner, shielded by time and space. It's here that a certain wizard's wand shop resides. No signs, no adverts, but full of magic that those who are destined will surely find. Now, in this very shop works Ben, a university student enchanted by both history and mystery. I, history in his lectures and mystery in the shop where he apprenticed under Master Alaric, an ancient wizard whose attire appeared stitched with constellations and whose eyes glinted with unsolved cosmic riddles. As Ben hung up his coat one evening, Master Alaric approached him. Ah, Ben, there you are. We've just received a shipment of spell-binding materials, dragon heart strings, phoenix feathers, and something a bit more peculiar. Ben's eyes sparkled as he imagined the wondrous items packed within the boxes. Ah, Master Alaric, you had me at dragon heart strings. I'll sort them right away. Sorting through the shipment was a chore that felt more like a privilege, each item pulsating with untamed magic. However, it wasn't long before Ben's hand grazed something extraordinary, a gnarled branch of elderwood pulsing as if alive. Ah, you found it, Master Alaric materialized beside him, elderwood powerful yet unpredictable. Do you feel it calling to you? Ben nodded. It's as if the wood itself wishes to be wielded. And so, the task began. Under Master Alaric's tutelage, Ben painstakingly worked to create a wand from the mysterious wood. Remember, each stroke of the carving knife is like a verse in a spell, intricate and indispensable, Master Alaric guided. And the core, phoenix feather and dragon heartstring, Ben inquired. Indeed, interwoven in a dance of flame and might, responded the master. When Ben finally finished, the wand was unlike any other, etched with ancient runes and empowered by a magical core. It radiated an elemental energy. As Ben whispered the activation incantation, the wand reacted with fervor, swirling wind inside the shop and extinguishing the candles. Astonishing, Master Alaric murmured, You've created a wand of the elements. Earth, air, fire, water, all under your command now. But with such immense power comes responsibility. Ben, one must wield it wisely. For in the wrong hands, it could wreak havoc, Master Alaric cautioned. I understand, Master Alaric. Power like this should be guarded. 
been acknowledged. With that, he chose to lock the wand away, sealing it in a magical vault within the shop, to be touched only when the world was ready for its might. A wise decision. Master Alaric approved. Perhaps one day, another worthy soul will find it, but for now, it remains a legend, whispered through the corridors of time. And so, our first story comes to an end. In Edinburgh, every end is only the beginning of another story. Ah, it warms me old bones to see ye all huddled round for another tale. In a cluttered office filled with dusty tomes and scrolls, Sarah, a young history student, is passionately debating with Professor Williams, a stout man of significant years and even more significant wisdom. For years, they've been chasing a legend, a tiny passageway between two time-worn tenement buildings, cloaked in ivy, said to have magical powers that bend time. Sarah, full of youthful energy, slams her book shut. The ancient manuscripts point to a single location. The last piece of the puzzle is in place, Professor. We've got to go see for ourselves. Professor Williams looks at Sarah over his wire-rimmed glasses, his eyes twinkling like the stars of the night sky. Ah, you've convinced me, Sarah. Tomorrow we shall go on a quest for the ages. The next day, Armed with notebooks, quills, and a hearty dose of courage, our intrepid duo find themselves navigating narrow alleys and winding roads. At last, they reach the place whispered in the manuscripts, a narrow passage hidden between two towering tenements, the walls adorned with ivy as if wrapped in green lacer. This is it, Professor. This is the spot, Sarah exclaims, eyes wide with anticipation. Professor Williams beams at his student, Onward then, but let's proceed with caution, my dear. Stepping into the passage, they feel the cobblestones pulse beneath their feet. The ivy seems to shimmer. Suddenly, the air shivers with an indescribable magic, and with a twist and swirl, they're engulfed by radiant light. When they open their eyes, they find themselves standing in a medieval marketplace. Vendors shout the day's specials, children run around playing tag, and minstrels pluck their lutes. I can't believe it! We've travelled through time! Sarah exclaims. Professor Williams nods. Indeed, but we must also find a way to return. The manuscripts mentioned a puzzle to be solved. A curious plaque catches their attention. It's mounted on a stone pedestal and engraved with cryptic symbols and a riddle. What begins, but never ends, and is the key to your journey home. After pondering for a moment, Sarah gasps. It's time, Professor. The answer is time. Professor William smiles. Brilliant, Sarah. Speak your answer aloud. Sarah clears her throat and announces time. As if obeying her command, the cobblestones glow, the air trembles, and once again, they are engulfed in a luminous spiral of light in the blink of an eye. They find themselves back in the narrow, ivy-laden passageway. Our adventure was more successful than I ever dreamed. Sarah sighs, filled with awe. Professor Williams places a gentle hand on her shoulder. And yet, Sarah, the true adventure is the knowledge we've gained, a lesson we'll carry for all the days to come. So, my young friends, let this tale remind you the streets and alleys of Edinburgh hold more stories than you can ever imagine. Will you, too, discover a hidden passage one day? Who can say? But for now, let your dreams be your passage to adventures unknown. Do you still have the strength and desire for one more story? If so, please listen. This time our story unfolds in the historical Greyfriars Kirkyard. Daisy and Tom. Two adventurous teenagers visiting Edinburgh for the first time had heard about the legend of Greyfriars Bobby, a Sky Terrier that loyally guarded his master's grave for 14 long years. Bobby was the epitome of undying love and loyalty. A statue in his honor was erected near the graveyard, and it was said that rubbing its shiny bronze nose could grant wishes. 
Intrigued by the tale, they decided to pay a visit to Greyfriars Kirkyard, where a surprise awaited them. The caretaker, old Mr. McGregor, welcomed them with a smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. Ah, young ones, you've come to see Bobby's statue, I reckon. Yes, sir, we've heard so much about it, Daisy replied, her eyes twinkling with excitement. Ah, well, I hate to break it to you, but Bobby's nose, it's gone, Mr. McGregor said, pointing at the dog statue. Daisy and Tom were shocked. How could the nose just vanish? The tale took a mysterious turn, and they felt like they were part of a real-life puzzle. Intrigued and determined, they set off on a quest to find out what had really happened. Along their search, they stumbled upon several clues, cryptic riddles, and tales from various grave visitors, suggesting that the nose was not merely stolen, but had vanished into thin air. The duo finally realized that wishes were still being granted, but not in the way people expected. Look, Daisy, Mrs. Henderson said her son got into university the very next day. She visited Barbie's statue, even without the nose, Tom said, after they listened to several accounts from local. Yes, but it's different now, Daisy replied. Before people wished for superficial things, but now, they're asking for what really matters. Old Mr. McGregor heard about their discovery and nodded sagely. Ah, you kids have uncovered the truth. Bobby's spirit still roams these lands, granting wishes, but now he knows better. Now he grants wishes that come from the heart. Daisy and Tom looked at each other, amazed at the turn of events. We don't need to find the nose, Tom said. We just found something far more important, the true meaning of loyalty and love, something that Bobby himself would have wanted us to understand. And so, as the evening sun cast its golden glow over Greyfriars Kirkyard, our young adventurers learned a valuable lesson, not from an artifact, but from the rich lore and love that floated in the very air of Edinburgh. Ah, what a journey we've had tonight, from hidden wand shops to time-twisting alleys and even to the spirited realm of Greyfriars Kirkyard, we've wandered through the magical nooks and crannies of Edinburgh. Thank you, lads and lassies, for sharing this enchanted evening with me, your humble narrator, Angus. But as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end, and I must bid ye farewell. For now... I dare say there are more tales tucked away in the cobblestone streets and the misty hills, waiting for the right moment to reveal themselves, and I promise you we shall meet again to dive into more captivating stories. Ah, uh, but before you drift off into the land of dreams, let's make the transition a wee bit smoother. Close your eyes and lend an ear, for I've got some magical, calming music that'll send you off into a night of splendid, dream-filled slumber. So until we meet again, may your days be filled with wonder, and may your nights be as peaceful as a Scottish loch under a star-filled sky. Good night to you all, sweet dreams.